welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another review of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Season 8, episode 11 is called First Come, First Served. And this was an interesting episode. Um, Potomac is still in this weird space that I'm not really with, but I think. One thing I will say, I am going to give producers a little bit of credit because I haven't really been able to do that thus far. I feel like the producers are kind of actually doing a decent job of who the problem is with this group. Like, it's very clear as much showing who the problem is in this group, who the, who the people, who are the people in this group that's basically stopping this group from moving forward. They're definitely throwing it out there. It's very obvious. And... <clears throat> It's just wild to me that this, these people who are trying to ice people out and turn are actually icing themselves out. And as the audience, I kind of don't want them there anymore. So it's like what they think they're doing is giving the opposite of what they think that they're doing. And it's, you know, when you play dirty, no, you, you don't, you can't win. You don't win with it. So I know there's another saying, but I don't remember what the saying is all the way. But anyway, let's get into the review. I don't want to be too long on this. So we start with like, um, kind of like a cute mini scene where it wasn't quite a montage, but there was like this little part at the very beginning where it was montage s like Housewives montage-esque, but only they lasted longer. So it was more like short scenes. So anyway, we have Wendy and um, Eddie, they're wishing um, their son Carter um, happy birthday. He turns, he turned 10. And so, um, they had, um, like four rows of like cupcake candles I and mean, cupcakes and, and candles and on the cupcakes. And then like, uh, Eddie had the balloons and whatnot. And they're waking, they're waking Carter up early. This is like, I think it's at like three or four o'clock in the morning. I'm assuming maybe his birthday was on a school day and, you know, some people have to be at school. Some kids have to be at school like at 7 a.m. So maybe that was what that was about. But anyway, it was cute. And then from there, we see that Giselle and Ashley are talking about coming up with the athleisure line together. I feel like this is for the show. I don't think it's real because neither of them have the fashions for this. Um, and they kind of, to them in their head, they're thinking this is going to be... <clears throat> Lululemon meets Savage Fenty. And Ashley's sharing that she wants to be financially independent because she kind of relied on Michael too long and still is relying on Michael. And so this is why they're doing that. I mean, <laughs> I I'm not going to lie. The scene didn't really give much. It was just kind of another mini scene. And then from there, we see Karen is talking to her family, um, mainly her Aunt Viv and then her um, cousin. I forgot his name. And they're going over um, what they want to do, what more they want to do with their grandma's house and the land and plans with it. Um, because we know from the previous episodes that um, Karen wants to open like a bread and breakfast type thing, make it where people can stay and kind of learn history of the land and whatnot, which I think would actually be super dope. Uh, but then she joked with them about um, <laughs> growing um, adding marijuana farm to the land and Aunt Viv was like I'm not with that that's a little too much because Aunt Viv the whole entire time she's like whatever you want to do just as long as it's not too weird or freaky and so that's why she mentioned the marijuana thing but I feel like this episode should have been called more or something tied to that because the marijuana thing gets mentioned more than once in this episode which was quite comical so I actually made it a light fun episode because of that but um, <clears throat> anyway so they joke about it. They laugh, um, kind of saying like, hey, you won't even know it. You'll be so high, you won't even know it, that, that, you, that you don't like it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that pretty much concludes all the little mini scenes there. Next, we have Mia and Robin meeting up to go relax through like a salt sanctuary type deal. And by the way, this is something I've always kind of wanted to do. I wanted to do more type of um, relax type of situation so i get massages right but there's also like um bath houses here 
Um, not what you would think, but like they have like the salt water, like a spa day, like the different type of spa stuff. I've always been intrigued by that and always want to do more, but child, you have the coins for that because pampering yourself is not cheap. <laughs> so, but anyway, I say all that to say, I would love to try this one time <laughs> anyway, but they're recapping <clears throat> the mother's day brunch. And while, um, Rob is there, uh, be, well, because Rob, because Robin wasn't there. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, by the way, guys, I do have a tendency of sometimes calling Robin Rob because it's just, it's, it's easy and it's short. And yeah, I meant Robin. though. <laughs> I totally meant Robin. Um, anyway, so the Mia mentions Karen's event in Surrey County and who should be inviting based off like the fishbowl. And because in the last episode, we remember that Karen's like, hey, I'm going to have, I'm going to invite some of you guys to come to my place because of the liability insurance of it all. We know Karen was lying. <laughs> we, we knew that. We all knew that she was lying. But since she's like our favorite, and I don't blame her. I'm not inviting anyone, everyone to like my place of dwelling or any place that I find sacred. Not any, not everybody allowed to come. But, <laughs> uh, so Mia feels a way about it, basically. I'm being long story less long. And they kind of both talk about Karen and how crazy Karen is. And <sighs> Robin thinks that Karen's obsessed with her. And it's like, child, you're delusional. And um, Karen's not obsessed with you. Karen is just like the rest of us wondering, why are you like so ditzy? I'm sorry. Karen, don't be wrong. So she just be looking at you. She looks at you like you're crazy because she thinks you're crazy. <laughs> like one thing about Karen, what I appreciate is she'll know how high her face to save her life. And I'm the same way when I'm kind of like look, thinking something's off. I don't know how to like fix my face to change it. Like, I don't know how to be like, <laughs> I can't do it but anyway. So <clears throat> Mia shares, shares with Robin about her marriage issues. To me, not going to lie, looking at this, I was like, oh, she's temperature checking the situation. Because Ro I, to me, in my mind, while I'm watching this whole entire season, I know Mia knows that she's about to leave Gordon. Like, I, I know that's what it is. And she, this whole entire season, she's just giving us the breadcrumbs. And then she's trying to slowly get the people used to the fact that this is going to happen. That is literally how I'm reading it, especially this scene alone. I was like, oh, she's doing a temp temperature check with Robin, see how she would feel if she was to leave Gordon. And yeah, um, Robin's like stay together, but who's going to listen to Robin when it comes to relationship advice? Because I certainly wouldn't. Um, and then um, Mia does ask about if Robin and Wanda are going to um, couples therapy. And she's like, no. And it's like, and Mia... <laughs> Mia also has a pattern or a hard time fixing her face. Because <laughs> Mia's like, girl, I know you lying. <laughs> I was like, Mia, and I ain't gonna lie. Mia is growing on me. I think this is the season where I'm really starting to really like Mia. I didn't care for her the first season. That second season, she, she made me mad, mad. What she did to Wendy. In this season, I think she finally found her footing. Mia is <laughs> Mia's giving me the comedy that I didn't know I needed, especially when it comes to this Robin situation, because she's literally playing in Robin's face. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> While on the back of her head, she's like, <laughs> anyway, I don't know if I'm the only one, but, but Mia cracks me up. Mia, Mia cracks me up. I mean, she has a little bit of a lying problem. But she cracks me up. <laughs> and when I say, okay, you know, I'm not going to say she has a lying problem. She has a strange relationship with the truth. I think that's what it is. She has a very, very strange relationship with the truth. And what her truth is versus what the actual truth is. A strange relationship. Yeah, I'm going to say that instead. I feel like that's a very more politically correct way of saying that. Like, strange relationship with the truth. Anyway, so 
Next, we though have um, Karen and Ray having a date day night. Um, wait, sorry. <laughs> reverse, reverse. <laughs> sorry. I will skip this whole entire scene. Um, Wendy and Eddie were actually going on a date um, lunch. Like, not really lunch date. It looked like a, yeah, it kind of looked like a lunch date. Um, a date night. And they were at this good looking Jamaican spot. And I saw, um, they showed the sign and everything. And if I'm in the DMV area, because it looked real nice, I might go and check out that spot if it's still there. So kudos to getting advertisement for like for that spot to get be, be able to be on the show and get advertisement because also anyone who's in the DMV area, let me know if that Jamaican food is good because the opulent, the opulence, the ambiance, wow, the ambiance, the ambiance of what I was seeing based off the scene. I don't want to check it out, but anyway. Um, so Eddie asked about when asked Wendy about her talk show. She's completely stressed out because this is one thing that bothers me about Wendy. This is kind of her storyline every season. She's taking on something else. She gets overwhelmed and it's a lot. That's literally, it's a rinse and repeat, but always is something new. But in this case, I know this actually led to something just like the candles led to something. She stills the candles. Um, it's like the things do actually lead to something, but if she wasn't just, if she wasn't so all over the place, even with how this talk show is going, I think she would be okay. But the problem is she's so all over the place. Like she probably, I think with her producer team, and that was the other thing she said that she was stressed out about because she had to rehire, she had to hire a new production team and all that. I think she needs even more help fine streaming her ideas and focusing more on one thing or not as many multiple things because I will say this I actually did watch a couple episodes of her talk show on YouTube and it is very much all over the place um it's fragmented on the different segments but it's still all over the place like I still think she needs time to it and, and, and it's gonna take time but like I think it's just part of her personality as a whole. She's a little all over the place when it comes to her ideas. And I get it because I'm a similar way. I'm very similar. Like I have the Jack of all trades, master of none syndrome as well, which is literally what I see when I look at Wendy's like, Oh, you have the Jack of all trades, master of none syndrome, which that is an awesome trait to have when it comes to life skills and survival and whatnot, and being able to adapt to any type of situation. But it also can be a hurdle because it's hard to get focused and stay focused on one thing and see it all the way through because you, you're almost too talented in multiple things. So I, I get it. Anyway, <clears throat> so we also talk, we find out about Eddie's um, weed business a little bit more. So she st he still does have the, he still is an attorney, but he has a weed business called Happy Eddie. Um, thanks to Deborah. Um, he figured I, and I think that was just so cool. He turned lemons and made lemonade. He's like, oh, if this lady's going to accuse me of doing some weird stuff. I'm going to take that name that she gave me and make it into a profit, which I don't blame her. And so they have a dual confessional and they both state that, you know, marijuana recreational use of marijuana became legal in 2022 in Maryland. And there's not a lot of black people who are in the industry who, you know, black, um, black, um, entrepreneurs within the industry. He's not that many investors in that industry, but he wants to be part of that change. And they both also admitted they both do partake in the libations of it all. And, <clears throat> and then they, um, also state, because also the other thing that comes up besides talking about that is that they've been as a result of what they both got going on individually. They are so super busy that they're having time finding balance to spend time with each other, um, which is a first for them. So I'm interested to know more about this storyline because I don't know, like I also want to know more about the weed industry from their perspective. I kind of have ideas of it because I have family who's in the industry as well um, because they're from another state that was legal actually way earlier. I feel like I think Michigan became legal 
I want to say they were recreational legal like 2019. It, it was a, it's been a while. And then Illinois was a little bit later or or maybe right behind them. Um cuz we're all I'm also in a legal state too for that, but anyway. Um So that pretty much concludes this thing now. Okay, so next we actually have Karen and Ray and they're having a <clears throat> a lunch date too. Um Karen does give him a hard time about it, though. She's like, so we couldn't do this at dinner time? Okay. And then he tries to order off the happy <laughs> happy hour menu. And she's like, uh-uh. No. I'm not a happy hour price girl. I'm a main menu price girl. <laughs> and so she called it out. She's like, Ray is e either he's just that frugal, which definitely is that, or... He wants to not eat that much food and get wet. And that's not what we're doing. <laughs> She's like, I keep an eye on this man. And it was quite funny. Um, but anyway, so Ray does ask about um, Karen's um, follow-up checkup that she had. And her doctor says she needs to slow down because she's doing too much. And he's like, I've been trying to tell you that. And she's like, okay, okay, <laughs> you know. And then she is very much still involved in this wanting to, you know, do better with the exercising. And so she wants to get a trainer, a male trainer. <laughs> she definitely emphasized that. Um, but then next they talk about, you know, her inviting the ladies to Surrey County. But <laughs> she does state, see, she's telling the truth now because she's with, you know, Ray. She was like, yeah. I um, put people that I wanted there. Um, I put them all in little like sticky things of the people who I wanted there all on paper. And then I drew them, all their names out of the hat. And those are who are going. <laughs> so therefore, there was never a drawing of the hat and it being random. She And she also didn't want everybody to be there. We knew that. <laughs> it was just funny that she actually literally admitted it right away. She's like, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't really want people, I don't really want everybody there, which I don't blame her. But anyway, <clears throat> so while she's there, she's like, okay, let me just invite the, the ladies. So we find out she invited Ashley, Candace, Giselle, and Wendy all responded with a heart emoji, basically saying they're coming minus Giselle. And she declined the invitation. And right here, we're seeing that Giselle is the problem. She's the problem. She refuses to let things go to move things along. She literally is the cog in the wheel. Like she's, she's not even a cog in the wheel. She's like, you know, when you have like, like she's like the stick <laughs> when you're riding your bike, the stick that will trip up your bike and make you just flip over your bike and break yourself forever. That's her. She's literally that. She is just, oh, we'll get into it more because it gets worse. But that is literally why I kind of started my video with what I said because of this lady. So next, um, we see that Ike and Naneka are unpacking their new home. Um, we found out in her confessional that um, as newlyweds, they never lived together. And so that's going to be a major challenge. And again, I'm going to, I know I've said before, but I'm going to say it one more time. I really wish we would have got all this story about Naneka before she decided to go in on Wendy the way she did. Because I now, because of how she led with someone else, someone else, you know, causing her to feel pressed versus us getting to know her. I want to be interested in getting to know her, but I have no interest all at the same time. And um, I'll actually will elaborate more because there's another scene that just lets me know. It's not even just the scene. It's just as a whole. You know, I'm just going to say right now, she's like a total stick in the mud. I don't see any fun with her. She doesn't seem like she knows how to have fun, let loose. She's very uptight, very... Um, like, I know housewives are known for, like, you're supposed to, like, be ambulance and, like, you know, styles the rich and famous type thing. 
But I also don't want to see like overly elitist like type of attitude. And she gives that. She projects it so horribly. Like Wendy has it too. Don't get it twisted. But like I don't know why. For whatever reason. Wendy's palatable. And maybe because she has the fashions and the reads. And she's just funny. And also her husband's freaking amazing. And they just look beautiful as a couple. But Nanaka and her husband look beautiful too. It's just. I don't know. It just seems like they're lacking. She's lacking. A, she's lacking personality to me. And her personality that she's been projecting so far has been very like haterish. It's not. It's very negative ish to me. It's I don't see when when she does try to project positive like vibes. It comes off very fake and phony. So. Anyway, um, I kind of went on the soapbox a little bit there, but. We do find out, um, so Giselle pops up and visits her and she does a tour around the house. And then Giselle does ask about her baby journey, baby making journey. And um, Mia actually, we found out that Mia helped her out by stating, you know, because um, Mia with one of her children, she did um, IVI, which is when you have a person's sperm and you get it injected directly into the egg, you know, through the, like in there. And then, you know, baby does his thing. <laughs> Icky bait the rubber. I'm not as familiar with this process. I'll be honest with you. So this is going to sound ignorant. And I, um, I just actually did some additional research, AKA Googled, um, IUI. And it's the same thing as artificial insemination. So <laughs> we know what that is. That's pretty straight to the point. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. And sorry if I explained it like kind of weirdly before, because I've never heard of it being called IUI. I've always heard it just being called artificial insemination because I don't know. That's the more simpler term. But anyway, continue. <laughs> but anyway, so we found out that is how Mia had one of her children. And so she shared that with Neneka for her. Maybe she should look into that. And so Naneka did decide to get a second opinion and go see another doctor about what's going on with her fertility and all that, which I'm not gonna lie. Even, even after the whole scene with um, Wendy and all that, when Naneka had that scene with her and her husband seeing the doctor, I would have did the same thing because the way that doctor was kind of condescending towards her or whatever, I was annoyed. I wouldn't have liked that either. And also too, I don't know if all people are like this or all women are like this. I'm talking to us ladies um, a little bit more here with this. I'm not sure. I'm not personally comfortable having a male gynecologist. I'm just not. I never have been. And I tried to, <laughs> when I was very, very, so when I was like um, becoming of age and I had to go to that for the very first time, um, I went to my mom's primary and her and my mom's primary is male. And so primary sometimes do, you know, the work. Yeah. So mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I just never felt comfortable. I was like this the whole entire time I was there. Like, I just felt weird about it. And let me know if anyone else is like that. I'm probably but my point is I'm not comfortable with. No, just absolutely not. But anyway. <laughs> So we find out that Karen also saw the house and, um, after basically giving the neck a tour of, um, Potomac, um, uh, we find out, so Karen tr tries to state, say that the <laughs> neck's house is in North Potomac, which is not actually Potomac. It's like another area similar. Okay. This is similar to people who are, are from the Midwest who doesn't know the difference between West Chicago and North Chicago. That's not really Chicago. Those are, those are cities. Those are Illinois cities that actually aren't even really near Chicago. They're like far burbs. North Chicago's almost in Wisconsin, I believe. And, um, West Chicago is like, close to Aurora. 
Like, it's not even... <laughs> it's not even in the same county as Chicago, by the way. So... I, I kind of so I kind of chuckled when I saw this because the the producers also put a nap, and it's confirmed that Naneka's place is actually in Potomac. It's not in North Potomac, like Karen tried to shade her and say. And so Naneka's like, "Yeah, she tried to shade me, but whatever." And um, Giselle's like, "Say you should have clapped back," and I'm just like, "Man." I don't think Giselle and Karen are going to stay in a good place. Just a side note. Just the way this is now doing its thing, I think the truce might might become over with again. They'll they'll get back to being a good place because they're frenemies. So this is what happens. But I'm pretty sure more is going to brew here because it's kind of happening throughout this episode. Um. So Cherise shows up. Also at the house, because apparently Sharice lives kind of in the same neighborhood or whatever. Um, so she came and stopped by. And we find out that Sharice and Nanette has been hanging out ever since they first met the Mother's Day brunch. So I don't know how much time has came between that and this, but yeah. And then um, Giselle shares why she's not going to Surrey County. <clears throat> and so... Giselle's reasoning is she refuses literally to deal with Wendy and um, Candace. So she's basically icing herself out as a result. You can't make this stuff up. Like, it's just like, grow up. Grow up. Anyway. Because this woman's in her 50s acting like this. I'm just like, child, I can't. Um, <laughs> and so, as a response, though, Karen decided to invite all the ladies. Um, <laughs> but what was messy about that was Karen tried to present it as if, like, she got her permit now, her liability permit, so now she was able to get, you know, more people can come. And Mia felt a way because also what happened here was <laughs> um, Candace said, yeah, I was going to come anyway. Fine. That's cool. Um, and then Ashley's like, yeah, same. And <laughs> Wendy was like, yeah, I mean, I was going to come based off the original invite. And <laughs> so she basically blew up Karen's spot to let her, let her know that like, so because really the way Karen sent that second invitation, it could have looked like it was the original invitation. So Wendy kind of called it out that that's not the original <laughs> invitation. And so Robin's not going. She I, Robin wasn't going to go anyway. I mean, I just feel like she wasn't going to go. Giselle didn't even respond to it. Um, and then Nuneka's there like, wait a minute. Like, cause she, this is all happening while, Giselle, Sharice, and Nanette are hanging out. And so Sharice's like, why? So uh, Nanette is like, why not get an invite the first time? And um, Giselle's like, you know, you either can go as being second option or just not go. And I feel like she's trying to, like, rec she's basically trying to recruit Nanette on her team. And it's very obvious that's just what that was with that saying. Um, and it's annoying. <laughs> like, Giselle, stop it. Anyway, um, the group the group messages get messier and messier, though. <laughs> because Mia reacts. She's annoyed. It's like a whole thing. Anyway. Okay, so next we have Karen, Wendy, Ashley, and Aneka. Um they all do show up at Karen's place to head out to go to Surrey County. Um, so those are the ones who end up going. Um, and Neca shades um, Karen and her confessional um, about what Karen did. But she did it in, like, her reads don't even read well. Like, she was shading her about her age and being senior, and called her a senior citizen. And it's like, ma'am, she's 60. That's not senior citizen. I would show with the ageism of it all because you will will wish that you look like Karen when you're her age. Okay? 
I don't know. Like the fact that I already said what I said about Neneka, but this is what this is one of the reasons though. But anyway, once in the Sprinter van, <clears throat> they immediately so she Karen immediately explains what happened regarding the invitation situation. But and then in the group text, Mia continues to call it out. She's like, what is this? Like, I'm not gonna come. <laughs> Mia's like, I am not coming if you're gonna do that. Um, and Mia, I get why she would feel especially away because Mia and Karen have been trying to work on a friendship again. And so I get why she would feel away. But anyway, Naneka basically echoes Mia. And at the end of the day, Karen has to like take an L for that. And she did gracefully because she got caught. <laughs> she got caught. Um, because that's what happened there. But anyway. Wendy shares the and Wendy this whole entire episode towards the end is being shady. Shady. She's like, well, I'm still glad I was on the original invitation. <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> but anyway, Wendy shares that um, Eddie will be having a weed event soon and clarifies that. But she does clarify real quick because uh, Karen asked me, like, who's all invited? Are you inviting everybody? It's like, well, this is actually a guy's event. So he, she has no control of who he invites. So she she scurried on out of that situation, that, that question. Um, but all the ladies, minus Aneka, have fun comments to say in their confessional about the weed. Because again, Aneka doesn't know how to have fun. Which is like, I don't understand why you're on this show. You you got to have a personality. When you're not, your dislike for Wendy can't be your whole entire personality. And you try and have babies. That can't be it. What is your personality? Anyway. So the producers ask Wendy if Eddie will be inviting the NECA and Ike. And she doesn't answer. She's just like. And there's this music playing while she's giving this look. I loved it. But um, then after that, Neneka states that she's going to be having an unpacking party. And she wants all the ladies to come. And she's making it where it's kind of like a, a slumber party type of deal. And um, Ashley and them are just kind of looking at Wendy like she invited all of us. I mean, Wendy. And, and then Ashley's like, hey, she invited you too. And Wendy doesn't acknowledge her at all. And, and it continues to be awkward. But you know what? I'm sorry, but Wendy's right here. And she's going to state it later on in the episode. Wrong order. This is the wrong order of doing things. And she literally said that. I was thinking it while I was watching it in the episode. So we're skipping ahead a little bit here. Wendy literally called out. She's like, this is the wrong order of doing things. Like, you may operate that way, but I don't. And neither do I. Like... I'm going to need to have an apology before we move forward when it comes to anything. I'm going to need to have you talk to me one-on-one -on -one before we do anything. Why am I going to go to an event where I've never had a conversation with you one-on-one -on -one about any of this stuff that you caused? Yeah. So I have a feeling Wendy's probably not going to be coming to the slumber party, even though she got invited. Because, again, wrong order. Uh, anyway. So then... As they're still like on their way there, because mind you, with the DC traffic and everything, or the DMV traffic, it's taking them much longer to get there than they thought it was gonna take. Like <laughs> they're in that, they're 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 in there for the long haul. It's a long trip. Um for like ladies being in a in a car and stuff like that. But anyway, um Ashley tells the ladies about her and Giselle's athleisure line and immediately <laughs> Candace. And Wendy start chuckling. And I was dying. They were like. Mm. And Wendy the one entire time was like. Have you seen how y'all dress? <laughs> like, the obvious. That's the irony. The two women on this show. Who can. Who don't. Who basically have never been able to dress well at all. I mean. Even what Ashley's wearing on their way there. E even what Giselle wore earlier on in the episode. None of them can, and, and the producers actually show that too. 
They can't dress, but they're going to come up with the athleisure line. Would you trust fashions from, from people who don't have fashion sense? I wouldn't. <laughs> That's like, to me, it's similar to like, okay, let me hire Giselle to interior, interior, interior decorate my apartment. It literally will look like three different apartments in one apartment, just like her house. It literally, like, her house, I'm sorry, I just, I just had, to, it's, it's, oh, the fruit was low, it was hanging, I'm, I'm grabbing it. Um, Giselle's house alone would tell me to never it, trust her fashion sense. I mean, her house literally looks like, if, if anyone's ever played the game Life, it's a board game, one of the houses is a split level, but it literally isn't, it's like a house that, that went through some earthquake damages and is split as a result. That's her house. Only she did that on purpose. It's wild. But anyway. <laughs> Ashley and her delusional mind think that the ladies are bothered. They're not. They just, they, they literally are thinking what I just said. And um, so then from there, they do stop to get gas. And then Wendy and Candace decide we're going to get, I mean, they were drinking on their way there anyway, but. Wendy decides she's going to get this gas station margarita and she is chuckling out of nowhere. And <laughs> Ashley's like, oh, there must be some THC in that, <laughs> that margarita. <laughs> I think, and from what I gathered, I feel like Wendy might have um, did some libations <laughs> before she got back in the car. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to do it, do it. And so... Everyone else is having fun laughing, minus NECA while all this is happening. Because NECA's a hater. And boring. Because I, I, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done talking about her about that. But anyway, so they do finally arrive at the destination. All of Karen's family is there to bless the house and the land. And they talk about the house and the significance of the house. And... We get to see baby Karen, like little Karen, a whole bunch of little like pictures of her. And then we also see, and I think this might have been, I, I don't think this was a house. They show some scenes from, I believe it was from her spinoff show that she temporarily had. Um, showing, kind of sharing more of the heritage of the house. So for those, for those who don't know, um, she was able to do kind of like a, a ancestry type thing where she was able to trace down her roots to the point where she actually knows that her, so her great, great grandma was a slave and this was a house that they were slaves. This is the property that they were slaves at because the house is the, the house in the land is formal plantation land. And also, we find out that Karen's biracialness comes from that. Her great-great-grandma um, ended up being pregnant with this, one of the slave owner's kids. And that's what happened there. Yep. Pretty deep and pretty sad. Um, but it's the reality. And, I mean... I just find it really, really awesome, though, that she was able to trace her roots all the way there. I have started it on a personal note for me. I just haven't gotten far enough yet. I, I need to actually probably check out. Um, this is not an ad, but the Ellen County Library in Fort Wayne, Indiana, is one of the largest genealogy places where you can trace your roots in the country. It's like, I think it's within the top 10. Um, I think it's actually top six. I think it's six, the six best in the country. So I, I've even offered that resource to my company. So now the company I work for, they use that as part of like the learning when it comes to like the, um, diversity groups that we have within our company that I'm part of. Um, but yeah, I need to actually take advantage of that because <laughs> I would love to do that. And it just reminded me watching this episode, it kind of reminded me that I needed to, I need to like get back into really trying to fix, figure that out. Anyway, so the ladies 
um, do end up working a little bit on the land to clear some debris from one of the um, trees. I'm close to the house. It was, it was fun. Um, they're making jokes that, not really making jokes, but if they don't clear the debris, they won't be able to see snakes, rats, or any of that kind of stuff. So that's the other reason why they're clearing debris. You know, common sense country stuff. Um, and so from there, they get finished, like, you know, doing the work, and then they have lunch together. And the subject of getting along and moving forward comes up. So Candace and Ashley, they literally are saying to him, like, look, we don't like each other, but we can coexist just fine. We talk to each other. We kiki. We laugh. But we're, we know we're not really friends. I mean, without saying that, that's literally what they said. Like, we can coexist. Why can't y'all? <laughs> and she's and. Ashley's literally speaking to Neneka and Wendy. Like, y'all really need to resolve this. Wendy is still not budging. And I understand why Wendy wouldn't budge. But, it's my huge but. You can't be like a Giselle on this show. You have to do what you need to do to move the story forward. Yeah, in real life, I will be on the side of Wendy. When it comes to like not moving forward. But for the show purposes. You would need to be like. Hey let's have a conversation one on one. And then they can have a conversation one on one. And squash the beef. Or at least be able to coexist. It really should be Neneka who's offering to do all that. But. Neneka's delusional. And. Honestly, without her beef with you, she would have no reason to be there because we know nothing about her and she lacks a storyline. So she's not going to be the one who comes to you. But I understand Wendy doesn't want to give her life and like do that. But it's just not good for the show when people don't know how to move forward. Um, but I'm going to need Ashley to, put, to give the same energy to Giselle, which we know she won't because she's one of Giselle's lackeys. Um, so yeah, but that is pretty much, so Wendy basically says what I said earlier, it's like you, she was like, she basically articulate why things need to happen or for them to move forward. She never really closed the door, but she didn't really say they were going to move forward either because she was like, she basically said like, Hey, call me a B. And then the neck is pushing back saying, well, you cussed at me. But then when you roll the beam footage, the neck cussed at her first. And then Wendy did in response. And then you called her a B. So you're disrespectful from jump, but she's omitting that part. And I really wish Wendy would call that part out. Um, and then the other thing is like, she talked, you talked about your mom. You talked about my, like your husband tried to put, put hands, your husband tried to put hands on my husband. Like, I don't know how we're going to move forward with all that, which I don't blame her. Like, you brought, from jump, you bring someone's family into it. What other conversation do we have? Not good for the show, but in real life, yeah. So, Wendy's like, but then the group is just like, well, she, invite, she invited you to the event. And, like, the neck is like, yeah, I invite you to my event. I invite you to my home. And... Wendy's problem, which is similar to what I said before, wrong order. You've skipped multiple steps. She called it steps. She's like, you skipped multiple steps to get to this point. We should have had that one-on-one -on -one conversation first before you even presented it to the group, and you didn't do that. And then now that it's elevated and escalated, you still haven't, tr you haven't apologized or none of that or come to me one-on-one -on -one as a woman. You're still skipping steps. And it's just like, I don't know how you argue that, but Wendy's not the, the best arguer, so it doesn't really help. If she was a better arguer, it would be good. But like Wendy's not a very good arguer, but like that's literally it, though. There's nothing else that needs to be said. But anyway, that does conclude the episode. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you. Oh, before I go into all that, I kind of did like this episode. I didn't hate it. Um, I hate to say this, but um, I'm going to call a thing a thing. 
It's a chore for me to watch this show. The other franchises, it doesn't feel that way. With this one, I don't look forward to it. I could have literally watched this show yesterday, but I decided to go out instead and I didn't watch the show. Because <laughs> I had no interest. Like, I, oh, <laughs> I feel bad, but that's how I feel about the show. But anyway... They, they need to get it together. But I already said at the beginning, I'm going to say at the end, they need to get it together. They need to get it together. But please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon the Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.